Okay. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, November 26th, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. It's Wombat and the Cyborg. The Cyborg. Don't know him. About to learn. Very sure. cool. Digital Free Thought Late Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 1,100 of us. Ooh, We're wow. the, the, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. We'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Uh, some sciences and then some game shows, and I think there's nothing better to check up on than your health and see how you've been doing now that you are a cyborg. What's up? What's life in the sciences? Have you ever dreamed that you need oh. a robot? <laughs> Uh, well, I never felt that it would be this painful <laughs> over this long. Actually, I'm really experiencing not that much pain. Great. Uh, I am loaded up on drugs, so who knows what will come out of my mouth this day, this sure, fine day. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. But um, I really, they're mainly just for uh, um, other things besides pain. Uh, they're like aspirin and naprosicin or naprosis or whatever it is. Sure. Um, I can't even remember the name of them, so I'm kind of out of it today. It should be an interesting show. I think uh, I, I feel pretty good. Yeah. How did uh, Tennessee do with the um, referendum on medicinal marijuana? Did they did they allow it or did they is it still being pushed out? I think Ohio passed it. And I think Tennessee is like next on the docket, at least for this election cycle. So less extreme of a pain reliever than some of the medications that you've been telling me about. Yeah. Tennessee. Yeah, I have not taken of it. If anybody's listening, I have not taken partaken of the marijuana cure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or at least the uh, marijuana pain relief regimen. Sure, sure, sure. sure. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can't wait till you come on the show with like a Hawaiian shirt and just like, hey, listen, big sunglasses. <laughs> it's changed my life. Let's talk about yeah. let's talk about the new God. Um, yeah. all right. okay. You mean so, Jimmy Buffett in the background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been having a really good holiday, um, playing some disc golf with good friends. Uh, we did a glow round, which means you play at nighttime. And the cool thing about playing at nighttime in the woods is it's sort of, uh, less, it's a less, hmm, how do I put it? It's a less intimidating course when you can't see the trees, when you are playing in the daylight and you're seeing the trees that you need to throw around, you're constantly uh -huh. thinking about angles and how far you need to throw and where the disc will fade and how you wrap around objects and obstacles. When it's a glow round, it's all about your mind's eye and where the basket is. And you'll have a general idea of what you need to do to get there. And you just throw the disc. You have a glow in the dark disc, so it's easier to find, but you don't see any of the obstacles. And as a result, you might actually get m more impressive scores than you would have imagined otherwise when you are less distracted about the very intricate natures of the course and just throw your line and just see, hey, did I throw with intention with where I wanted it to go? Great. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so wonderful. It, 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 it's a completely different feel. Um, all right. So last time we were doing the show, we had uh, uh, Keith Simple on and we had a, a fun little game show where we talked about quotes that either came from uh, God, uh, a tyrant, like a human tyrant or a Disney princess. And we had to pick one of the three. And so I want to do a quick continuation of that and talk about Jesus or Jesus? Now, Larry, you told me something that was very interesting at the top of the show, as in, who is Jesus? And so uh, in the in the time span of at least the people who are on, on this uh, presentation that I'm showing you, for those who are watching the video form, can you at least recognize the two people below in, in this picture? Uh, one of them. Yes. Uh, and that would be Jesus on the right. I, I assume Jesus would be on the left and maybe he's a rap star. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, formerly known as Kanye West, now known as oh. Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So okay. we go. Yeah, he has a lot of different names that he goes by. Jesus is one of them. Uh, mm. All right. So I'm going to be presenting quotes that are either from acclaimed, uh, uh, who would, what would we call him? A hip hop icon 
uh, rap star production music specialist Kanye West or Son of God, uh, third arm of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. And I want you to let me know which quote came from who, right? Well, this should be easy. I, this I should be I know, easy. I know be the easy. quotes of Jesus pretty well. Okay, he knows the quotes of Jesus pretty well. Let's put him on the spot. All right, here's the first one, Larry. Are you ready? Here's mm -hmm. your first quote. Right. I am so credible and so influential and so relevant that I will change things. It'd be Jesus, I would think. Okay, he goes for Jesus. That's correct. Good job, mm -hmm. Larry. That's yeah. going for Jesus. So mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know anything about Kanye West, um, it's a question of whether or not he's playing a character or if he's actually uh, um, so... Uh, Into a in, role? In his own role. It's it's to a point where it's a little bit of both, but uh, it's an he's an interesting dynamic of a character. He's always going into controversy, but that's sort of like how he maintains relevancy in a very populated market with much younger rap stars that come out each year. He just mm. comes up more crazy. Anyway, here's the next quote. I am the vine. You are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That would be Jesus. He goes for Jesus. And that's mm -hmm. correct. Larry knows his Jesus quotes. Very good. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ saying, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Not the but, most inspirational quote I've heard. Yeah, but No, you know, more abusive than anything else. You can't more, do anything without me. Yeah. Like I've always said, it's um, it's sort of like an abusive relationship. Yeah. Uh -huh. Most people <laughs> tend to be. I love to see partnerships that are equal where both people support each other, but there's such a, I am better than you and you are lucky just to be around me sort of vibe, particularly that comes with Christianity. But I find it really scary that people, you know, hold on to that as like a good example of how to be a good father or a good uh, son or a good family member. There's a lot of scary undertones that come with that, particularly when it comes to self-worth and self-esteem. You got thoughts? No, that's true. Um, it's like you're being in an abusive relationship, you're mm. abusive, controlling. You know, right. I'm, you know, you can do nothing without me. Means, you know, basically, you're nothing. Right. I do. You wonder, can do nothing. Yeah. If I wanted to highlight this, imagine if there was like a wedding that you went to, right? Mm -hmm. And the vows that were shared were all along this line. Like a husband looks into his wife, his, 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 his mm. soon to be wife's eyes and says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And then the family's just like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> <That crap>. mm -hmm. <laughs> Pocket Bell's cannon going off in the background. And then all the atheists in the room just like sort of like, what did he just say? Is that normal? Is this going to be a good relationship moving forward? We don't know. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. next one. I am like a tree. I feed the branches of the people. I don't remember Jesus saying that, but I saw go with Kanye. Kanye, good job. Listen, did you? you know, it sounds like something he would say, though. True, but did you know you knew so much about Kanye West before the show even started? That's very. <laughs> but isn't it weird that, like, when we hear it like this, we think, "Oh, what a silly thing for a person to say." Of course, Kanye West would say that. But when Jesus says the exact same thing, you're like, "Oh, well." I can't believe people believe him when he says that. That's that's the dynamic. That's what I love a lot about these um these presentations. The the juxtaposition of like clearly crazy person saying something and then someone saying the exact same thing who's a religious figure and people being like with their double standard saying, "Oh, but it's okay when he says that, but it's not right. okay when the tyrant says that." Anyway. Right. What great with great blessings come great responsibility. <laughs> um this one's kind of kind of confusing me. I don't remember him saying those words, but it sounds like something Jesus would say. Sounds like something Jesus would say, and the answer is Kanye West. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, stump the duck, you got me. You know, if my if I were to take away anything, this is actually some of the most uh, cogent um, words of advice that came from uh, Kanye West. Because if you are going to receive a lot of blessings. If you are going to be in the spotlight, if you are going to be someone that has power or influence, mm -hmm. it's up to you to maintain that with positivity and and put that back into a community or show some responsibility. With right. That kind of right. I, I guess I should have really gotten that because I didn't remember Jesus saying it and that and Kanye is a kind of a religious person. So he would use the word blessings instead of uh, power. Sure. So, yeah. yeah, it makes sense. 
but also what does jesus say about responsibility at all are you you are fairly well versed on jesus uh quotes has he ever spoken on the aspect of responsibility? nothing comes to mind no right if anything he says i'm not here to bring peace i'm here to be a sword and i'm going to make your mm -hmm. sons fight with your dads and i'm going to mm -hmm. burn down other people's mustard or was it fig trees without asking he's like hey uh -huh. that was my fig tree it's may mm -hmm. why, yeah. why are you, it's yeah, not even says, fruiting yet what are you yeah, doing in in so many words i'm, I'm going to break apart your family because i am your family now oh, man. And, and that's such a cult leader type of thing so it is it is it is <laughs> absolutely if anyone in jonestown or anybody else said that we'd recognize it on face for what it is but if it comes from the bible we put a double standard on it so if yeah. anything a game like this is a really good way to highlight the cognitive dissonance that some people can employ and if they were to take this with any degree of critical seriousness and think why is it that I can't recognize, or if I can recognize it, why is it that I'm not alarmed by the fact that these quotes sound very similar between these two people? Why? Uh -huh. And the, the context is one guy is deluded in thinking that he's a God, and one guy literally is telling you that you're beneath him. How is that in any way an improvement, right? Like, All right. All right. Yep. Here's the next one. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today's trouble is enough for today. I'd say Kanye, because I, I don't remember reading that, that passage. Okay. We go to Jesus. And wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> what is the uh, passage? Do you remember? Do you have it? You would have to look this up because I actually have this on full screen. So um, oh, I see. Uh, more than welcome, we can come back to it and get the citations for it. Though I do think it's kind of interesting. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today's trouble is enough for today. That is an interesting it's both, how do I put it? There's um, some euphemisms that I I will employ to improve my sense of well-being or, or wellness or outlook. Um, the one that I don't like so much is the one that says, hey, live only in this moment and don't think about the next moment. What I like to think about it is an ounce of prevention prevents a pound of cure, for example, or like, you know, set yourself up or hard work makes the dream work, right? Or like if I work hard now or if I make sure things are in place now and not procrastinate, I will reap rewards of better preparation, better work, you know, and and even though there is a struggle, uh, how do I put it? The the grit is worth the glory. I'll I'll throw out a bunch of euphemism like that. The ones I don't like are, hey, don't worry about tomorrow. Today's bad enough as it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of depresses yeah. me. A little yeah. depressing. Whether yeah, so, it, it says funny, it's Matthew 6 34. Ooh, let's go. So yeah, whether it came from Jesus or Kanye, this wouldn't be a quote that I'd like. Also, it doesn't strike me as the kind of thing that Kanye would say. I think Kanye would be like, uh, get yours now, hustle, get something right now, or something like that. Either way. It depends on the mood he's in. Depends on the mood. All right, let's go yeah. to the next one. God blesses you when people mock you, lie about you, and say all sorts of evil things against you. I'd say Jesus. What makes you say it's Jesus? Only he's talking about God's blessings, but it, it could go either way, of course. Okay, okay, okay. The true answer is Jesus. You got it right. Good job. God blesses you when people mock you, lie about you, and say all sorts of evil things against you. So the question would be, in my mind, um, so so what would probably be the answer? The idea of like, if people are mocking you, lying about you and saying all sorts of evil things against you, that might encourage me to maintain a certain behavior of of things where maybe I am uh, lying to people and deserving of being mocked. And maybe I should have a course correction on my part. But the fact that I can be so into my own belief that when people, and I say something that's worth being mocked, or if I say something where people will say, something bad back to me like if i say to someone hey you're going to hell and they say that's a terrible thing to say to me like why are you being such a terrible person oh yeah. here's a person who just called me something terrible god is mm -hmm. blessed he called me a terrible person yeah. yeah i'm finally getting the feedback that i want that god shows that he's mm -hmm. blessed me god blesses you the the indication that god blesses you shouldn't be that when people mock you or lie about you it should just be hey when god blesses you people say nice things about you and you are being told that you're a good person like why can't mm -hmm. that be you, the you could consider that the things that are good things that people are saying about you are blessings themselves Ooh, that's good too yeah exactly yeah. so mm -hmm. i don't like the idea of reinforcing perhaps feedback on terrible behavior 
by interpreting it as God blessing you. I think that could lead to some problematic circular thinking. And I definitely see some people who are caught in that, that, that tide pool, or they're just, you know, constantly doing terrible things, protesting terrible points of view or, or, or advocating terrible points of view. And when they being told or called out for it, they're like, this is the feedback I needed from God. I'm like, what are you talking about? Anyway, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. next yeah. quote, I am a God. Yeah. Um, again, it could go either way. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I just have to take a guess on this one. I think it's Jesus. But we'll okay, see. this one's Kanye West. It's one of his most <laughs> one of his most classic quotes. One of yeah. his most classic. Is quotes. it really? Yeah, absolutely. I think okay. he almost like was going to name an album of that, but instead called it the the Ballad of Pedro or something like that. But yeah, mm -hmm. one of the classic quotes from Kanye West. Uh, I think what Jesus said. What's the closest Jesus said? It's like Son of God or I am. Yeah, the that's right. God. Yeah, he, that that is who you say I am or something like that. Mm, okay. Next one. One day the light will shine through, and one day people will understand everything I ever did. Kanye. Ooh, very good, Larry. Very good. So, <laughs> you know, Kanye West is not a very uh how do I put it? He's not a very complicated figure. It's just right. an intriguing person in history, uh, by virtue of the fact that he understands that he has to say and do things to maintain relevancy uh in a very crowded market of popularity and advertising, et cetera, like commercializing. So it's just a question of how much has he actually internalized the things that he says? And if there's like even 1% of it that he's actually interpreted correct, like as an actuality, he becomes a dramatically interesting person. <laughs> right. But but Jesus has said a lot of things too, right? And so- Well, either that or his myth has, or they've attributed things very, to him. Very. You know, because who knows if he actually existed or not. Right, right, right. So, you know, the cool thing about Kanye West is we have him on recording, we have him on tapes, we have him on CDs, cassettes, we have him on mm -hmm. video, internet yeah, stuff, right. like documentaries have been done on him. We know this guy pretty well. We don't know a lot about Jesus, honestly. We mm, don't have certainly, there's him. certainly nothing in the first century accounts. Right, right. So there is and no- And that's a whole way. century. Go ahead. Right. So it does feel like something that Jesus could say, like one day the light will shine through and one day everyone will understand everything I ever did. That's like, okay, sure. Like in a, in a actual sense. Yeah. Maybe if there's like some, you know, returning of God and we have the, the day of restoration or whatever, that where resurrection of everybody comes back and like floats back up to heaven. Sure. Maybe, but for Kanye, like he's talking about it in such a grandier term, but we have all the tapes. <laughs> we have, we the, have the tapes. We got it. We're good. Like we understand, like we can replay mm -hmm. the, these moments back and forth. Like I can find them you know, this quote where he says this exact same thing. Anyway, it's just a level of grandeur that he likes to operate under. Anyway, next is don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and also trust in me. Oh, and so, trust also in me. I would say Jesus. Jesus, pretty easy. Yeah, yeah kind of the way he talks. Next, kind of the way he talks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> According to King James. All right, next one. Keep your nose out of the sky. Keep your heart to God and keep your face to the rising sun. That'd be Kanye. Kanye West. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right, let's go. Next one. And remember that I am always with you until the end of time. That would have to be Jesus. Are you sure about this? No. <laughs> <laughs> you got me guessing. <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> All right. I think you got this one. That one is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're running out towards the end now. Okay. So those who use the sword will die by the sword. Jesus. Yes. Very good. These are pretty, mm -hmm. these are pretty classics. Healthy mm -hmm. people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Jesus again. Ooh, it's interesting. I now I disagree with that, by the way. I think everybody needs a doctor, especially mm -hmm. in uh, uh, our American healthcare system. I think you can sure. verify health very quickly and easily, right? Like it's okay mm -hmm. to screen yourself, but sure. don't wait until you get sick before you go to a doctor, right? Like a doctor can help you from yeah. getting sick in the first place, right? Yep. Anyway, the only thing I want to do in life is help people. <laughs> uh, Kanye, I guess. Why isn't it Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> it really, why isn't it Jesus? Right. Because he's a cult leader and he wants to uh, mm. basically take advantage of people and get a following. 
true what if we had a god that did have that as a, a morale that he followed though that was the thing i was thinking about earlier this week where you know god made evil god made disease he made kids with mouth shaped hearts and 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 confusion and frustration racism all this stuff if he made everything he made all those things too but my mm -hmm. idea would be or at least made a system where he knew those things would exist and let it happen anyway right. like that's still mm -hmm. a problem so yep. um my thing would be what if it was just a god was just very open said hey i'm here this life that you have is sort of like a prequel to an everlasting life that we're going to have moving forward there was some bad stuff here i took it away right if you want it you can consent to it but uh otherwise it's going to be far and apart from you enjoy your life in the meanwhile it's limited it's not going to last forever but don't worry because you all are going to eternity with me afterwards and until then just practice being cool and kind with each other there's a lot of different people here a lot of cool things you can try cool music cool foods enjoy it have a good time and then when we go to eternity it's going to be even better than that so this is sort of just like the the warm pool you get into before you get into the jacuzzi have a fun <laughs> time guys everybody i'll check in on you once a week see you later <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or you, you come check in on me basically so you yeah. Doing, though. yeah 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 yeah. you yeah. gotta go to him why did it have to be such a, a weird constructed like i did that in like a couple of sentences 30 seconds or 20 seconds why did i need a giant book you know, why right. do I need people in hats and like uh -huh. baby's blood or like wine and have to eat or, crackers and it's transitive. Or simply be be excellent to each other. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It could have been yeah. so simple. It could have been so simple, mm -hmm. God. You could have made it so simple. Why do you have to listen to atheists explain to you how to <laughs> make it? Anyway, the only thing I want to do in life is help people. Kanye West. All right, next quote. You should only believe mm -hmm. about 90% of what I say. <laughs> As a matter of fact, don't even believe anything that I'm saying. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give the audience a second on this one. Eh? Okay. Okay. I, I think it's Jesus. Oh, really? I would say mm -hmm. uh, we go to West on this one. Um, and again, uh, oh, really? Hmm. You didn't? You thought Jesus said that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you should only believe about ninety percent of what I say. As a matter of fact, don't even believe anything that I'm saying at all. So there are glim there are glimpses of Kanye West where he's not on a stage saying crazy things where he's like, you know, taking his daughter to uh, childcare in England. Cause he has a home over there and yeah. like a paparazzi mm -hmm. comes up to him and they're like, Hey, are you Kanye West? He's like, yeah. And they all shake hands and he just takes his daughter into the care healthcare. Like he's like not pretending to be Kanye West. He's just like, Oh, I just have to drop my, my kid off somewhere or, <laughs> or he'll like, You'll you'll have pictures of people who catch him in like a shrimp shop because he likes like Cajun food and yeah. stuff like that. And he's just like, oh yeah, I'll take some pictures with you. It's all cool. Like he's not in character. So I always wonder if these glimpses are when he's saying the crazy things he says, which are sometimes absolutely terrible. Let's let's get let's not even like you know sugarcake it. Like sometimes he right. says some terrible <clears throat> things. Uh, is it still? just him trying to maintain a spot in the headlines because if he said hey it's going to rain outside and everybody should be nice to each other does that get as much publicity in today's market and is in some way is kanye west or yeezus just one big art project <laughs> at the end where am i, I on the stage or not yeah you know, exactly is it's he like, going to project it what image am i going to project in this that, encounter yeah. that is well, the show that is the show it's yeah. very interesting one thing about this is uh, you should only believe 90 percent. i mean hmm. you shouldn't believe uh, only you should only believe about 90 percent of what i say matter of fact don't that's a huge discrepancy from 90 percent <laughs> of nothing but that sounds like something atheists would say don't believe us check it out for yourself go do the research find out for yourself right if anything don't ever be 100 percent about anything i say right, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would say, yeah, never be never be absolute about anything. I think there is some mm -hmm. worth to uh, uh, even if I what I say sounds true and you agree with it, even if we're on the same page as far as atheism is concerned, yeah. if some of the terms that I'm using are wrong or some of the context or the illusions that I'm making are incorrect or valuable, call me out on it because don't just take what I say for. Uh, yeah, if I'm, if I'm using the wrong word, I'd like to know that I'm using the wrong word so I can communicate better. Right. You guys and Dread Pirate also keep me on top of that. So I appreciate that. Okay. That was it. Oh, how are we on time? I think 28 minutes in. Yeah, we probably need to take a break. Okay, cool. We'll come back after the break.
Okay. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Okay. Cool. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now and have 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's old city at Barley's Tap Room in Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty outside on the deck. <laughs> you can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or at knoxvilleatheist.org, which is our website. You can also just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. One well, what do you want to pick up? I'm glad you enjoyed the sh- the, the the game. Uh, I did. I did. I Put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to talk about something that I had uh, a shower thought. I don't know if you know what shower thoughts are. It's sort of sure. Like- <clears throat> oh, you know about them already? Tell me about you. Tell me. Yeah, about the you. profound things that come to you when you're otherwise involved in other things that or have a quiet moment. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Um, I think mine is related to the soul. And I thought there was no better opportunity to bring it up with the mask. You know how I hate talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea would be like, um, I've heard I've heard this quote before where people would say, I can't imagine how fortunate I am in today being here with this blessed family, et cetera, particularly during like Thanksgiving, because if I was this guy, or if I was that person, or if I was an aunt, or if I was a badger, I wouldn't have all the the blessings that I have in my life right now. The If I was a tree, I wouldn't have my daughter. I wouldn't have this family. I wouldn't have the sunshine on my skin. If I was this other person who lived in a different country who was dead, maybe I didn't have access to the music that I love. And my mind is, it's weird that you've taken your identity and think that you could remove it from your body and superimpose it on something else or another organism because you are your body. Uh, and I don't mean that in a offensive, uh, an offensive way. I just meant that your mind, your the person who you are, yeah. are identifying mm-hmm. it yeah. is a is a extension of your body like your body produces the mind and there's no better example of that than if you just look at your brain activities you see a boxer and they get knocked out when their brain shakes in their head so much that the brain's like okay we're turning off functions until i can restart right mind's Mm -hmm. off (laughs) you're asleep there's a period of time where they're not like a cogent person anymore what's what's up player well i was back in medieval times or later they would say, if if you cut off your hand, is the hand you or are you you? Is the body you? Right. You know, if they cut off your arm, is the arm you? Mm-hmm. You know, if they'll go through the whole thing, which part is still you if it's still attached to your head? And, right. you know, that type. Of, and what do they do? In, <laughs> and especially uh, revolutionary France, if they wanted to kill you quickly and, and con- inclusively, they yeah. cut off your head. And right. so that houses your mind. Of course, in ancient time, they thought it was your heart. That, that very true contained very true. your your identity we surprisingly have the same effect soul. When you remove it from the body but it's not necessarily because now we have people who have artificial hearts who are walking around and are still very much themselves yep. we have presidents vice presidents if anything that are still circulating uh-huh. like blood through their body and they're like i'm not dying as long as i have access uh-huh. to batteries like mm-hmm. okay um but yeah that's a really good point we used to think that it was the heart and you think that when you remove the heart that's the person and they only knew that because when you took a heart out of somebody, they died, right? And so they thought, oh, it must be this thing. But now we have surgeries where you can actually replace people's hearts, put the same heart, a different heart into a, the, uh, a different body. And that person still thinks they're the same person with all the same memories and everything like that. So we know that it's the brain. The brain does a number of really cool things. It can predict, it can make a uh, pattern, or it can... Uh, uh, pattern recognition. Yes, it can take in a multitude of different kinds of senses, but it also allows us to have cognition, which allows us to try to put all these things together and try to parse it out so that we can better interact with the reality that we can experience, subjectively experience. Yeah, but it's not always right. 
It's not always right. And not only that, but it's not a separate supernatural thing that exists outside of our body. If anything, no. the mind is just an emergent part property of a functional mind. And we know that whenever we interfere with the function of a brain, it interferes with the function of the mind. We know that with drugs, if you take like sort sort of psychedelics and you alter the chemistry of the brain, the mind also simultaneously gets, you know, a little warped <laughs> with how it Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right? But think uh, of how the amount of LSD on a tiny piece of paper that sends your mind off into hallucinations and auditory hallucinations. Right. And, and again, and it's not like it's LSD is like a gateway into a supernatural dimension. It's just no. a function of hey, if you manipulate the chemistry that goes into your brain, you're going to manipulate the functions of your mind as a result because your mind is a function of your brain. You can't take your mind apart from your body, which is your brain. Your brain is a part of your body, right? You can't take your mind as a part of your brain and put it in another animal or put it in another tree or another person. That's stuck with your body. Your body. So here's the main thing. Here's the, the, the main conclusion. Um, it's not that you were a a soul or a person or a mind first that was implanted into a body. It's that the body exists first and then it produced a mind, which is what you are identifying with. That is the, it is your, you, who you are is first body. And then the body made a mind in order to pull all the, the observations and, and, and sensations that it's getting. And it just mm-hmm. made an identity mm-hmm. that you are constantly, you know, course correcting day by day. And, and, Putting that together, that's what you are. And it's not that you could be removed from your, your body and be sent into space or into another animal. Like, you are your body. And if right. anything, that should just make you more aware of the fact that you need to treat your body well. You need to take care of it better, and you need to make sure that the things that you put into it are going to reflect the kind of mindset that you'll have. If you are, for example, constantly smoking, eating terrible junk food, uh, abusing yourself in in... I don't know, like chemical ways, drug ways, et cetera, like that could have true effects on your mental outlook or if anything, inhibit what your true potential could have been. And and while I'm not one to say that you, you what you should do or shouldn't do, I can say that it'll have a demonstrable effect on your capacity to to be who you want to be if you are interfering with the natural chemical uh, stability of how your brain works. And if your diet's bad, it's going to have the same effect. If you're, if you're, I don't know, if just what you feed your mind or your brain with like, in, in, as far as information goes, is warped. Uh, prejudice thinking, uh, news cycles that are just about scaring you. and Horror movies. <laughs> Horror movies. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. Fox, Fox News. <laughs> Whatever you inform yourself is going to be what you become. Your reality will be. Yeah. yeah yeah so like you have you have complete so that's not so much a scary thing as it is a empowering thing you have complete fidelity and control of what right you, you are the yourself. gatekeeper right right so use your mind use your mind to control that use your mind instead of being a reactive agent be a proactive agent and say okay if what i if i am what i eat if i am what i inform myself with then let me eat good things let me inform myself very well and let me try to meet that high standard of evidence for the things that I will accept as true and dismiss as false. And then that's that will be, in my mind, the the epitome of like high level life or a high level mind is just something that really cares about what comes in and what stays out, both in food, information, friends, relationships, et cetera. Like it's all part of the same yoke. And it's not something that you just take your mind out and be like, oh, I'm so free of all these terrible physical constraints and now i'm just going to go to heaven and just take all the good things with me it's like no your brain you can make all those good things now if you just start proactively adjusting them at the moment that'd be my uh my takeaway weird shower thought but yeah um just the idea that a soul could be something that you can remove from a body and that you think that it's your mind when in fact your mind is just your brain it's Uh, what the mind does it creates identity it creates uh your 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 eye, as it were, the mind's eye, mm. as uh, Daniel Dennett had put a whole book out on, on consciousness and mm. about how the mind creates uh, your entity, your entity. Right. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> another thing about it, besides you were talking about drugs, is physical abuse. 
you talk about being uh, beaten in a ring and how the effect it has on your brain. You have to look no further than some of the retired boxers. Uh, yes. You know, I understand that some some people's reality uh, force them into that as far as uh, their talents and what they can do versus what they can't versus uh, their needs, their f financial needs of the family, kind of stuff like that. But um, it's really sad that people will put themselves in a, in a position where they need to be abused physically on a daily basis uh, going forward. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, but if you want to tie the physical abuse of the brain to your personality, yeah. uh, you, you don't have to look any farther than a, a prefront, prefrontal no, lobotomy. Oh, uh, if, uh, you're a biologist. Can you tell us a little bit what a what that, that is and what it's so, used for? So you're talking about the prefrontal cortex of the brain? Yeah, and a lobotomy to that area. So as far as lobotomies to that area, I am not familiar with the stories. I do know of like the hemisphere cuts that they make for those who have ellipses. And also, Larry, for the 40th time, I'm a biochemist. But yeah, that's also biology, <laughs> that's biology too. But, but you're uh, a biologist to me. You have to be a biologist and a chemist to be a biochemist. <laughs> right, like that's right. half of what I am. <laughs> right, right. You're a lot more biologist than I am. So, But anyway, yeah. let's, let's say you're pre- frontal cortex is where yes. your your most of your cognitive uh, abilities and, and your yes. entity resides and it takes time for it to develop so yeah. it's not something that even when you have you always have one even when you're born but it's the last part of your brain to develop and it takes you know upwards of 15 maybe 18 years for a brain to completely develop its prefrontal cortex it's yeah. like a fit. so your lizard brain is already ready to go you're already breathing you already know where milk is you're getting some basic motor functions but the cognitive functions of a brain that can not only have a source of identity but start to like weigh options that are more advanced that evolution didn't necessarily select for but like the consequences of your action ethics morality um, um self what do you call it self-preservation long-term benefits short-term benefits like the, the the weighty aspects of what we consider humanity are all processed in this prefrontal cortex and you're saying they lobotomize that part of the brain yeah back in the earliest 20s 20th century 1900s uh, late 1800s uh, if you were a, a a harmful criminal let's say mm -hmm. one who goes around killing people and oh, man. uh who who does terrible things in public not they might send you to prison but it, it's uh, more enlightened uh sciences would say no put them in a mental institution let's see what we can find out about this this situation and if if you were in there and you were so so combative so uh, physically abusive to others you know fighting and all that stuff they may give you they might actually put you on the operating table and slice up your prefrontal oh, cortex, sucks. yeah, uh, which is which basically removes your identity. Mm -hmm. At that point, you're you really can do more than eat, sleep, right? Uh, and and that you know, if if the soul was not created by the brain, why would that have an effect mm -hmm. on your on your personality? Right. It's it, it's a physical a link from the from the physical world to the consciousness as you would call it which right. is also physical right uh, your brain which is a physical thing does create consciousness uh, if you believe in souls that is creating a soul instead of just a consciousness then right. you, why would you not say that dogs don't have souls so, or cows or any other high mammal or even right. orangutans you know them so they have mor I, morality and all that this year i was sitting around the thanksgiving table and i I forgot how I, the conversation did get brought up, but people know I'm an atheist, so it is what it is. And the retort that I got back that I didn't really engage with, but I did get back is, Tyrone, did you know that scientists have determined that when a person dies, they lose 0 0.3 grams of weight? And That's Dr. McDougall's study that they're <laughs> quoting. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I what's the story behind that like what's leaving and like i i i happily respond with like you know if if it's if we're trying to determine if that's a soul that left and not just moisture or air or like gases etc right mm -hmm. like would you want to base that determination solely on weight or would you want to have a better detector like a soul detector instead 
And I think they came to the conclusion like I'd rather have a soul detector because it could be anything like that. Because I can't, I can't, I wouldn't know if it's moisture or air. Or anything. We have no idea if souls right? weigh anything. How can exactly. he jump from to the conclusion that you know uh, losing a little, a few micro ounces of energy of mass, right, is a soul? Right. right. How do you know it's not Thetans? Right. You know? We don't have any attributes of a soul. Right. We've never been able to uh, capture one and, and put it on the dissection table or right. uh, even examine it. Tested. Right. It's a bad, it's a bad measurement with uh, inconclusive uh, uh, result. Well, no, it's jumping to conclusions as well. It is. And, it is. and I wrote an article on that particular article that, that Dr. McDougall came out with, and his methods were crude, at least, right. even if this mm -hmm. final uh, observation was, was a real thing and had right. anything to do with it. With, no, um, I hear you. Results. We, we have a so at our in our at our work site we have a big powerful microscope. It's called an SEM, a scanning electron microscope. It can see things down to a million times magnification, super high resolution, very very cool. But the problem is, is sometimes we will get parts and we need to look at it with a microscope and then express how much matter is on that sample. And the thing is, a mat how much matter is a measurement of weight. Like I need right. to put that thing on a scale and weigh it. But they're saying, uh -huh. but you can see it, right? So how much does it weigh? And in my mind, I see <laughs> because I at best have a really powerful mag magnifying glass. And I can see the thing, but I can't tell you how much it weighs. So I have a tool, but this tool is not designed for the question that you have. So in the same sense, weighing a body is not a good way to determine how much soul has left the person because we don't know if it's a partial leave. We don't know how much the soul weighs, period. We don't know, even know if they have mass. So when if we see uniformly that bodies lose mass, what else could that be that has mass that would interfere with the idea that it's a soul leaving? And the truth of it is there's a lot of stuff that leaves a body that cell. They respirate, they sweat, they 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 defecate. They uh, There's a lot of stuff that bodies do that are that are still enzymatically and and even though there's no brain activity I and mean, even in some cases there still is brain activity in the, in the most sense but like as the day as the body shuts down it's not a one-step process it's a multi-step mm -hmm. process so mm -hmm. based on what time you pick up the body and at any time afterwards they are losing mass by virtue of the fact that they're not trying to maintain homeostasis they might still yeah, get and, body heat and that doesn't even speak to the point of death a lot of time people hang on for forever and it's and you think that you know, they're never going to die because, you know, they're just going to maintain this vegetative state. Mm. And then the doctor walks in and looks at him and says, he's gone. And yeah. What, what the heck, you know, when did he die? You know, <laughs> he, well, he died when I noticed he was gone. You know, it all depends. You know, there's, right. there's so much that's not account encountered or taken care of in, in this description. True. But the fundamental thing is there's a difference between a scientist said so and science said so. Uh, if a right, scientist says right. something, it's an opinion of a person. If science mm -hmm. says, it, or if science alludes to it, what they're talking about is we made a model that can be tested. But the thing is, the model of a weight, a weight machine, is not credible for weighing something that may not have weight at all. It, there's a, it's an unknown variable. So you right. had the wrong tool to be able to come up with that determination. And me, even 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 as a layman, just hearing that story, I can employ science and say. Well, that's not as a reliable method as getting an actual yeah. tool that can measure a soul lever or not. Right. And the, both of those people, whether it was the scientist who did that test or the layman who just heard about the test, are both using science to completely dismiss the conclusions that were presented. Yeah. That the, were. Uh, yeah. Well, the next time, the next time you or anybody listening hears that question, or somebody tells you we know how much soul weighs, uh, you say, <clears throat> "Well, say because of this experience." You know, you say, "Well, look at him and say." Well, how much does the soul weigh? Yeah. And they'll say 0.4 grams. You say, <laughs> how do you know that? <laughs> how did you? Because of this experience. Thing? Exactly. You know, which, you know, which doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't right, give right, you uh, right. Not only that, but like weigh. my body, my body, I know this because I've been losing a lot of weight, has, goes through fluctuations on a daily basis. I go through seven pounds up and down just from how much I'm hydrated, you know? And mm -hmm. if I weigh myself in the morning and I weigh myself in like the evening and then I weigh myself again the next morning, I'll go through a seven pound flux right. just because sure. I'm drinking a lot of water and just flushing a lot of stuff out. So, uh -huh. you know, we, and how many grams is that? That's swoosh, uh, roughly over a thousand. No, roughly 
like five. Oh, know. John Richards is gonna destroy me. It's like five. <laughs> I'm gonna say five kilograms is rough. It's a little bit more than half. So it's 3.5 kilograms, <laughs> 3.8 something. Kilograms, thousands. Seven pounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like we have a lot of grams there for the people who don't like the metric system. It's a lot more than 0.3. It's like a uh, hundred times as much as that. Uh, the other question, the other comment I had before we're done with the show, the other comment I had was that around the Thanksgiving table, I brought that up like, hey, wouldn't it be great to have a better system than weight? And they're like, yeah, that's that's that would be much better, like a supernatural light that just shone if your soul leaves your body like that would be much better then i can say hey let's look at the supernatural tool but okay go ahead larry oh no go ahead uh, i didn't hear you but come <laughs> more, go ahead. Soul stuff. more soul the uh the interrupting conversation was i don't worry about souls i don't worry about whether there's a heaven or a hell i just think that i'm going to die and come back as another body and i'm going to live through reincarnate that over and over and over again because that yeah. makes me happy and that was the, it makes me more happy to believe that than anything else. Well, and, you got to ask them though. Uh, today, there are 8, million, 8 billion people in the world, pretty much. When I was born, there were 4 billion people. <laughs> Where do all those extra souls come from? That, and I'm just saying, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. There's no lounge, a waiting room in heaven of people waiting to become actual physical people on earth. How like, you don't know that? <laughs> I do know this. I'll tell this. I'll throw this out to you, Larry. I do know the fact that my my soul is not something that was inserted into my body from like a supernatural resource. My soul is very much demonstrably right. part of my brain that exists. And we can de we can demonstrate that. And I can you show said, you that sure. if you impact my brain, you impact you impact me and my mind and stuff like that. So whatever yeah, there, the soul is is not whatever I care about that's inside right. my head. Right. There was this guy who was a miner. He's a case study. Uh, what you do is you put some dynamite down into a hole between, that they drill into the rocks wow. so that you could tamp it down with this tamping rod, which is about the size of a uh, those kind of rod, reinforcing rods that you put yeah. in concrete. Yeah. You would yeah, you would tamp it down. You don't want to tamp it too hard. Right, right, right. <laughs> and usually when you're tamping it, you know, it's below your face. You know, you're oh, no. Why like would you a, do it that way? Why don't you do yeah. it this way? Well, it went off shoved the entire rod through his through his uh, forehead through his face did very little damage uh, but it did uh, damage a certain portion of his brain which changed his personality he became uh, a Democrat. before the, <laughs> the other way around he was a likable <laughs> open-minded guy before that but afterwards he was it was more prone to cursing to uh being abusive to people around him right right, know, right. That type of thing so it changed it literally that physical interaction with his brain changed his personality. No. And listen, I'm telling you, you are what you eat. And I mean that more than just what you consume. It's it's your environment that influences what your body is capable of doing. And it, that influence affects how your your mind operates because you are tied to your body. Uh, my point would be if you are in a abusive relationship, even if it's religious in connotations, like you were raised believing all those quotes that we talked about earlier, that Jesus is God and that you are uh, subservient to him, you are a branch on his vine you know like you are not uh he he is number one and you have to go through him in order to have any sort of presence uh, uh presence in in heaven and and you are a sinner and that there's you cannot be a good person without god and even if you are uh with god you're still not good because you have the unconditional sin from adam and eve like if you maintain that and you internalize that that will as much impact your brain as caffeine uh, you know, uh, aspirin, anything like that, because it's just parts of your environment that you're consuming to make up who you are. And it's going to be an effect of whether it's good things that you're using to infect your, or your, to impact your brain or bad things or toxic things. If you, I'm in an abusive, toxic relationship and I'm constantly in that relationship, that's going to affect my mindset. The same thing as if I was in a religion. Uh, it's going to, as just as equivalently or just as equally, uh, um, impair my ability to operate at my full potential. And that's why, I, that's one of the cause of empathy and concern that I have for people who are in a religious religion that does not offer them any self-esteem or self-worth and only does so right. through their, their holy figures. It's, it's, um, it's a sad situation for me to see that. Um, and then my last takeaway would be when I was with that Thanksgiving guy and the guy said, I just, it makes me happy to believe that I'm just going to constantly kind of reincarnate. I, I I simply said I would love to I would love to recognize that I can believe in things that are true even if they don't make me happy. 
right? And right. I left it at more or less at that. Just because something is true, doesn't uncomfortable, doesn't make it. That's not a good way. That's not a good vehicle to arrive at a true conclusion. And right. I enjoy the fact that even the things that I do know are true or can, I can demonstrate are true. They aren't necessarily the things that are in kind with what I like or what I want it to be. And and yeah, there are some harmful truths, climate change, uh, uh, racism. Like there's like things that are exist that just is what it is. But I at yeah. least am aware of it now. And that gives me a better accurate model of the reality that I can operate yeah. on. Yeah, you, you used the word there, that, you know, truth. Well, we use that as a basic um even our keel line uh in our life but you know the religious uses is, is something that you know they have that they own it's ours the truth is ours mm. um and matter of fact they'll capitalize it so many times in their in their uh writings you know we have the truth right uh but it, when it comes right down to it does he know that no he doesn't know that he's going to reincarnate does he believe it anyway yeah why not it makes me happy so it, it's it's such a dichotomy that they can hold in their minds at the same time that yeah. um, you know they believe stuff that they really cannot demonstrate at all and i'm sort of hoping that there's a stepping stone to believing something that comes with a lot of harmful dogma and 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 beliefs that affect my life as far as like a voting population versus just believing in like a deist god or believing in reincarnation just because it provides you some sense of comfort um I would I would be more concerned with the idea of reincarnation than a deist god because what happens if I don't know uh, in the weirdest sense your 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 girlfriend dies your high school sweetheart dies and she becomes your daughter like that would be very weird like there's there's only so many people right? <laughs> uh -huh. and does it only happen to humans I mean yeah it's uh, like Buddhism it's, oh, good, the, point, good point you come back as a lower animal or a higher human right right right. So anyway, those are our thoughts for today. Uh, I think we, I think we've gone through the whole show. Larry, do you have any uh, um, things that you'd like to plug before next week? Only uh, my website, uh, the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, nice. I mean, sorry, digitalfreethought.com blog. Mm -hmm. um, do you tie? I mean, before I get going, I'm going to close the show. Okay, I was playing Baldur's Gate three. Mm -hmm. and there's no spoilers that i'll discuss but it's a game where gods are very much real and they impact people's lives in a very matter of fact way across the entire pantheon there's many different gods and they all have direct conversations with their followers they have direct statues that will commune with people they allow for certain magical spells to occur they have dramatic impacts and the commentary of the characters who know these gods are real some of them go through uh, um, paths, personal paths, where they realize the God that I am worshiping does not have my best interests at heart, and I am no longer going to worship this God. Even though I know this God exists, I am choosing not to worship it because I was either indoctrinated into the belief, or I realized that this God is actually uh, disadvantage, disadvantageous to like my own well-being, or just a terrible person, or manipulative. Like, it's a it's there is a commentary there and could just be by virtue of the fact of how I'm playing as an atheist of seeing characters who know gods that do exist, but are choosing not to worship them. And I find that to be such a very it's such a on point commentary of what you are capable of doing as a human being. If you are if you are caught up in a religion that you can still, you know, you have even less evidence than they do that their God that your God exists. You don't know that your God exists, yet you're still worshiping him. So the idea that that a God can exist and you don't have to worship him should be a signature of God should just prove that he exists and leave the question up to us to determine whether we worship him or not. Because sure. the devil knows um, God exists, right? So like, and the devil's not worshiping God. So like, why can't we all just know, make it easy for everybody and then move forward? Why do we have to operate on faith? Which in my mind is such a terrible system to come to a true conclusion because you could have faith in anything. So true. And that system of gods makes more sense than one omniscient God and all powerful God, because in, in your uh, game, multiple gods mean that they can fight against each other. Yes. Bad things can happen as a result of, of their conflicts yep. and, and their favorite people can do uh, things to other gods, favorite people. Yes. But in a, in a one deity system like Christianity, um, he's responsible for everything. You know, if he's omniscient, if he knows everything, he's all powerful and he's all loving, 
then how could an evil be in the world? Mm. That that is the biggest problem for Christianity. And that, you know, they just say, well, you know, evil's in the world. You know, devil's here. Yeah, but they don't pause to think who put the devil there. Or who, uh, <laughs> who has God not more powerful than the devil? Is he not omniscient and omnipresent and uh, all powerful? Right. You know, it it all comes back to the main deity. And if he's if it happens, it's up to him. Right. And uh, blame or otherwise. Matter of fact, Isaiah, uh, what was it? Isaiah 46 or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, he says, I the, I do good and I create evil. I, the, your Lord, do all these things. Hmm. So he, he confesses <laughs> right there in the text. Anyway, uh, my uh, just a reminder, you can find this show on podcasts everywhere. Be, just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help from re recoveringfromreligion.org. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel is at Doubter5. You can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. What's your channel there, Ty? Let's well, chat we'll be... on YouTube. Let's chat. Go be there or be square. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on uh, WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye, -bye. everybody.